Hello. Here we are again, this time in Chesterfield. No, we're because not. we're going to talk about... We're not uh, in Chesterfield. What? Huh? This is my garden, we're in Essex. Yeah, I know. But I thought we were making out we were in Chesterfield. We've blown that now, haven't we? We're not <laughs> doing that. <laughs> right, yeah. We're clearly <clears throat> not in the Pomegranate Theatre in Chesterfield, but we were there in 2016 into 2017. And that's what we're talking about. It is. We yeah. performed in Aladdin at mm. the Pomegranate Theatre and it was a wonderful season. It was. Although I felt it necessary to come to a calm and tranquil place to tell you all about it today. Why do you feel that? Well, let's be honest. I don't think any pantomime season has ever been beset by so many problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll tell, tell you about those in the coming minutes and we'll find different locations around my garden to just help <laughs> ourselves calm down <laughs> while we're telling you those stories. Uh, it's, uh, is your garden several acres then? Not quite. People had acres during that season, <laughs> yeah, what I can yeah, remember. That's true, yeah. We <laughs> started rehearsals on the Monday and uh, already we had a problem because uh, a great actor called Joe Connors, who was going to be playing Abenaza, had had uh, a bereavement in his family and uh, pulled out of the production. I think we found that out on the Saturday and rehearsals were due to start on the Monday. Yeah, so we had to start our rehearsals without an Abenaza. So uh, uh, I think you were reading in for Abenaza some of the time. I wasn't during evil this. enough. Yeah. No. <laughs> Well, you are normally, so. <laughs> but uh, we started rehearsals in that way anyway. Uh, and by day three, the Wednesday, uh, along came uh, another great guy called Michael Garland, the legendary Michael Garland. Michael Garland. Who joined us and became uh, Abanaza. So he stepped into the breach, if you'll pardon the expression. And um, we got through rehearsals, it was going okay. And then unfortunately, um, the Emperor of China, who was Christopher Howard, mm. had a back problem which he'd aggravated on the journey up, I believe. And also staying at George Telfer's house because he fell through some furniture <laughs> at George's, which didn't, I um, shouldn't be laughing because it didn't help his back problem. Well, he's gone into more detail than I was going <laughs> yeah. to. But anyway, Christopher Howard had an injured back which was getting progressively worse. Yeah. <clears throat> he struggled through rehearsals, the technical rehearsals, the dress rehearsals. Because during the dress rehearsal, when actually Christopher Howard fell over on the bridge did, yeah. uh, in the, uh, what was it, the Palace Garden That's right, he, set, he slipped it? over and then we gave him a chair in the wings room to recover and I remember him being sick in the wings. As well. <laughs> fell flat on his back, yeah. And uh, once the show opened, it became obvious he was in too much pain and wasn't going to be able to carry on in the show. So That's unfortunately, right. he had to leave. Then we had some shenanigans where the Emperor of China had left we promoted our genie, who was Aaron Spendolo, to play the Emperor of China. Yes. And we promoted one of our male dancing ensemble, Gregory Cox, to play the role of the genie. I'm following all this. Are you? Just about. I hope yeah. you are as well. <laughs> anyway, um, Abenaza leaving and our Emperor having to be replaced with understudies wasn't the only severe thing that happened in this production, even in the dress rehearsal. No, that's right, because our great sound man, Andy Onion, who is a resident at the Pomegranate Theatre, he was rushing down to the pit and slipped and banged, well I'm not sure he did slip, but he banged his head on the pit and gashed it open. Yes, I think, I didn't want to go into details or apportion blame, <laughs> but our drummer Sean Tobin, <laughs> having just been told that whatever happened it was a dress rehearsal and we wouldn't stop regardless, stopped playing the intro of the panto. <laughs> this caused Andy Onion to be upset and he rushed into the pit and I believe got up in a hurry and hit his head on the roof of the pit, so to speak, and gashed it open quite badly. And there is photographic evidence to back that up. Um, but then there was a ray of hope because uh, Joe Connors, who'd been due to play Abenaza, um, now we were sort of two, three weeks past the beginning of rehearsals, um, he, he then felt able he could come back to the show. He was contacted and, and uh, um, Joe Connors came back and took on the role of the Emperor. So for around about a week, <laughs> Things settled down, although we had to rehearse him into the show whilst the show was being performed with understudies and mm. then in the daytime we were rehearsing a new emperor in. Yeah. Um, then for about a week, Aaron Spendlow went back to his role as the genie. Gregory Cox went back to his role as male ensemble. Yeah. Joe Connors was the emperor. You think, that's it, done and dusted. We can all relax now. Relax, yeah. yes. <laughs> and, and then, then what happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the stars of our show, Lee Brennan from the boy band 911, was Aladdin. Yeah, and, and we had uh, worked with Lee before in Peter Pan some years before in Derby. We shared a dressing room with him. We did, yeah. We didn't let that happen at Chesterfield, <laughs> so he obviously remembered. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. 
Yeah. He was rather energetic in his dance routines and his performance in general. Yeah. And right at the start of the show, he tore his calf muscle. Yes, not his uh, costume, his calf muscle was mm. torn and he got through that show. So I ended up sort of hopping, I remember. Yeah, yeah. That evening had it to It should go... have gone hopping in Kent, actually, because why do that. Picking hops. But we were in Chesterfield. That's true. And he'd torn his calf, so he couldn't drive. No, right. I wish I hadn't mentioned that. So do I. <laughs> um, anyway, he tore his calf muscle. He went to A&E mm. that night and was told he wouldn't be able to perform for the rest of the run. Yeah, yeah. So then, Gregory Cox then had to play Aladdin and uh, yeah he went on as Aladdin for a few days yeah. see people think you enjoy pantomime <laughs> I tell you putting this one on was a bit of a nightmare there's one more thing to tell you about and then we've got an exciting development <gasps> really so uh, basically all these things happened yeah. Lee Brennan tore his calf muscle was uh, signed off of the show and we had an understudy playing Aladdin all the patrons of the theatre took it quite well when they found out they wouldn't be seeing Lee Brennan, they'd be seeing Gregory Cox instead. He did a wonderful job, I have to say. He did, yeah. He did. But um, Lee Brennan came back to the production for the final four or five days and performed as Aladdin on crutches. A very brave moment, I felt. And it, uh, as one of the police in the uh, old Peak Inn at the time, I felt quite harsh having to chase him because yes. he, he didn't have a chance <laughs> to get away. <laughs> That's right. But he did really well, actually. As did all everyone who understudied in this thing or changed roles, whatever they well, had to do. it affected everyone in the whole production. It did. Somehow, everyone sort of came together. It made us quite a close-knit company. It certainly did. But it, it was great, actually. We had a really great season there. The audience loved the show, I'm glad. Yeah. Yeah. to say and everyone got through it but quite incredible and a, a, certainly a season to remember yes rather fantastically we've been joined live on the phone by the absolutely wonderful Liz McLarnan <laughs> hello Liz <laughs> we did inwardly we were cheering you inwardly everyone watching this video is cheering yeah. right now <laughs> <laughs> so obviously we've spent the last few minutes talking about all many of the problems that beset this production of Aladdin in Chesterfield. We just wondered what memories you had. Do you remember uh, any of those problems particularly? How, how, can, how can I forget any of them? <laughs> like one of those problems in a show, in a, a run of a show, would be like, you know, pretty bad. Yeah. But, I can't even, how much, there's more, there's yeah, more, I think there I must have been fingers. four or <laughs> five <laughs> things. Do you know, the only thing I can say is that I cannot believe that not one person in that audience would ever know. No, oh, yeah. any of that went on. no, that's right. That yeah, exactly. Oh, we did say, I think everyone sort of came together. It made us quite a close group and everyone sort of rallied to make it work, you yeah. know, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So much, so much else. Yeah. I thought it was going to be a bit scary the fact that um, our first emperor fell over in dress rehearsals yeah. Yeah. and we didn't get to finish we didn't get to finish our like uh, first proper run before yeah. he opened that night yeah. and, and you know we were all so worried about him yeah. and then, then when Lee hurt himself yeah yeah and we were all just like oh my god what's happening and then yeah. Oh, oh, just, oh, yeah. And the as audience. you say, the audience all went with it. They were they were fabulous. So we had a great. Yeah. It was a truly great season, actually, wasn't it? It what? really was. It was it was gorgeous, actually. Really kind people, hard working people. Yeah. Um, we, we enjoyed ourselves no matter what. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. well, yeah. well, yeah. none of the problems sort of directly affected you, but I believe there was a costume malfunction moment you had. <laughs> well, the so okay. So obviously. Being, being Jasmine, you're not on as much as Aladdin, so I get to go back to my dressing room, have a nice sort of time, have a cup of tea, <laughs> you know, get my clothes ready for later when we all go out partying, which we did quite a lot, but anyway, that's the story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but, so yeah, I decided I was going to, you know, pop to the loo, as you do. And uh, um, so I thought I'd fix my outfit totally fine, and yeah, fine, so it seemed all good. And then um, decided to go on stage with my dress tucked into my undies <laughs> and, but for this one show for some reason i decided to go on walk onto the stage facing the back <laughs> so it was just totally on show from the get go and i was like and i could hear people go like, in the audience and i was like oh my god i believe the fan letters started arriving next day <laughs> <laughs> well, the hate mail yeah <laughs> <laughs> I do, another thing I remember from that production, which was quite a great thing I thought we all managed to make happen, 
the uh, internet was taken by storm that year with the mannequin challenge and we did our oh, own. Yeah, well, I can't believe we actually made it happen because I, I was actually saying, I don't think this is, I think people are, are going to like not like this and it's not yeah. going to work very well. But yeah. you were all so optimistic and were like, no, <laughs> this is, it's going to be great, it's going to be great. And it was sensational well it was, a, it was hard enough to get everyone on stage to do it but I, I think i'm going to intercut into this video some of the footage just to show you because we got the entire audience to stay still and silent for about 90 seconds yeah. it was unbelievable it was amazing truly truly amazing yeah, yeah. Great, that great moment we're, we're taking the internet by storm yeah we also did that with um with your stormtrooper outfit as well. <laughs> yes, I do remember we had a stormtrooper outfit used in the production that we had provided. Yes. And I said, if a lot of people like something on social media, I'll wear it to the premiere of the Star Wars film Rogue One that was coming Not the premiere, the opening in yeah, Chester yeah. of it that was coming out. And Liz and Lee and lots of people got loads of people to like it. And I had to go as a stormtrooper to Rogue One. But it backfired because I didn't realise we were going for a Nando's afterwards and there was nowhere to change. <laughs> so I had to have chicken dressed as a stormtrooper. You idiot. <laughs> oh, that was just the best. We had so many pictures. It was so yeah, much. Oh, I, I totally loved that. I mean, it was a bit painful for you, but... Yeah, yeah. 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 No, but yeah. thanks for contributing to that. That was great. <laughs> yeah, no problem. All my hundred and odd thousand followers like this. Fantastic, great. Well, I have to say, one of my br most favourite memories from this entire production was recording backing vocals in a sound studio with yourself from Atomic Kitten, with Lee Brennan from 911, and me. <laughs> and for a, for a very small amount of time, I felt like I was in a successful band. It was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brilliant. do you think you might return to the panto world anytime soon, Liz, or or is? What? What are you thinking yeah. for the future? Do you know what? Chesterfield with you guys was the last one I did oh. because I've taken I took I've taken a load of time off actually. I did a show. Oh, I did Elf. The yeah, Christmas yeah. After. yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did Elf, so I couldn't wait for Christmas after that. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So after that, I just took time off because I haven't had it. I mean, you all know Keith, obviously, mm. and you Ben, of course, but Keith some more. <laughs> um, I, I haven't had a Christmas off for about um, before that was about. 14, 15 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. So I, so I just thought maybe, yeah, I'm just going to give it a bit of a rest. Yeah. When I take my next pantomime off, it's over to your place for Christmas dinner then, okay? <laughs> oh, absolutely, of course. <laughs> I have to say, if ever you do decide to do another one, I hope we get the chance to work together again because uh, you were fabulous to work with. Yeah. I, I, I totally agree. I, I say the same. You were both absolutely sensational to work with. And I just want to say as well, with the fact that you know you're celebrating so many years in pantomime mm -hmm. that i i have th there was a there was a time where i um had a couple of panic attacks um during during the shows mm. i remember that um you were there one one day and yeah. i just came off stage and i was a bit panicky and you would you're about to go on but the first thing you weren't thinking about going on stage the first thing you did was just stay with me for a minute and just like say are you okay are you okay and i was like i'll be all right in a minute i'll be all right in a minute yeah. and it, it stayed with me that so i just want to say thank you oh brilliant that's lovely thank you so much cheers well it's liz it's been wonderful to talk to you again thanks so much for doing this and uh, we'll have to get together very soon very soon well i'm coming to live in st Anne, don't forget this year brilliant great great we will look forward to seeing you there and uh bringing back some aladdin memories <laughs> yeah exactly i just thought well if it's aladdin i can't miss that <laughs> lots of love from both of us to you all right lots of love to you both see ya take care thank cheers you. bye bye, bye. bye. Well, there we are. That was the fabulous Liz McLaren. Lovely to talk to her and yeah. lovely to remember some of those things from Chesterfield. Beset by problems, we overcame all those problems. We had a wonderful company to work with and we had a great time, ultimately. We certainly did. And I even introduced Ben to coffees from Greg's. Yeah, that was a new one on me and uh, <laughs> never drunk them since. <laughs> Join us for more of these videos very soon. See you soon. Dreams come true and cutlets prime in the land of pantomime.